my latest batch of cooking spoons is totally dry now and um, so I'm going to paint the ends of the handles and then they'll get a coat of oil before I can post them off. First thing I'll do is I'll put a bit of tape around the handle just to give myself a nice clean line for the paint. I just use this uh, brown paper tape. You can use masking tape or anything you like as long as it sticks. I try and avoid anything plastic. And I've seen some people who kind of tape up to here and then they put like cling film or plastic and cover the whole rest of the spoon. Totally unnecessary in my mind. As long as you just are careful that you don't touch the wet paint and then touch the rest of the spoon, you'll be fine. So I just literally put a band of tape around here and um, you're not sort of throwing away lots of plastic. I've got a couple of different brands of milk paint that I use. This one is old fashioned and they've got a really good range of colours and I find the, the paint um, is really easy to use and you get a really nice finish on the wood. And the one that I'm using today is from Grace Mary, who also has a really great um, range of colours and more sort of earthy ones. This order that I'm painting today is for Alex Pohl Ironwork, who Alex is a blacksmith who makes all sorts of barbecue utensils and uh, skillets and frying pans and things. And he sells my cooking spoons with this colour which is exclusive to him, so uh, the only place you can get my cooking spoons with this colour paint on the handles is from him. And I'll put links to both milk paint companies and to Alex to his website in the description of the video, so check them all out, there's some really nice stuff going on there. So milk paint, when it comes like this, is in a powder and it's a mixture of uh, milk protein powder and then the pigment, whichever colour you've got. Um, so this one's blue. I've got red, green, white. I mean, it comes in any colour you can think of. And you just add water. The pigment, obviously, is for the colour. And then the milk protein is what binds the paint to the wood. Um, so if you were just using a dye, just the pigment, it would just wash off. So the, the the milk protein is the sort of binding agent, so it sticks to the wood. So I'll just tape this onto the handle, making sure that it's on there nice and tight, and it's not gonna. Don't want any paint kind of getting underneath it. Now I'll mix up the paint. So I've got another 30 or so spoons inside that I'll also do with this batch. So I'm going to mix up more than I would if I was only um, if I was only painting these three spoons. But the paint does go further than you'd think. So that'll do. And I've got some warm water. The best thing to do is to put it in a bit at a time because it's very easy to make it too thin. So I've got all the lumps out. You're looking for about double cream to, uh, consistency, sort of thick cream. The great thing about milk paint is it will only take about 10 or 15 minutes to dry before I can do the next coat. It was sunny five minutes ago. Before I take the tape off, I give it a, a rub down with kitchen paper, which just smooths off the, the paint a bit and kind of burnishes it. 
I find it, it leaves a nicer finish. So. Don't have to be gentle. It knocks off any of the little bumps and bubbles that you get from the paint. There we go. Now I can take the tape off. And there's a nice clean line. I burn these dots into every spoon and bowl that I make. Um, it's based on the Cassiopeia constellation and it's almost a W, so it's sort of fitting for my maker's mark. And um, what's good about it is you can sort of size it up and down depending on the spoon. It's not just one stamp that's the same size for everything. So I quite like that about it. Okay, last step is oiling the spoons. I've got a big old pile here. <laughs> and uh, this is pure linseed oil. I find the easiest way is just to get your hands dirty. I've just given them 10 or 15 minutes for oil to soak in a bit and then I'm just going to wipe off all the excess. Now I'll just spread them out on a rack and leave them in another room for uh, four or five days or so. I'll probably post them early next week so by then the oil will have dried nicely. I just noticed my lathe's fallen over. It's been at the end of the garden and I haven't touched it for months but it's been under cover. So it must have been extra windy for the last couple of days or just just blew it over doesn't look like there's any damage though the bit the bit that I was most worried about is this this part here because all the weight's gone on it but it actually looks fine so I'm just going to pick it up and see if it's alright Well, I'm pretty amazed that nothing's broken or snapped off. I thought this bit was gonna... would have broken for sure under the force of the thing falling down. I've actually been really neglectful of the lathe. Haven't been on it since maybe July. But it's still in pretty good state. I was planning to get on it next week anyway, so um, it'd be a good opportunity to give it a run and see how it's doing. Might need to might need to sort these bits out. They're looking the centers are looking a bit rusty, but no, that's not too bad. And the weather's getting better, so I'll come out and have a little turn next week. Let's get it on. I'm working on my folding saws this afternoon because I'm out of stock, so I'm just putting a few more together. 
I machined down all the bits already. Um, so just cut them to sort of dimension and drilled the holes and cut the slot down the middle with a table saw. And then I finished them off by hand. So I chamfer, chamfer all the edges and then I carve little notches in the cross pieces where the, um, this bit will sort of rest. And then I carve the handles as well. And then the last thing I do is I always just take take the handle of a, a metal knife and just burnish all the edges just to soften them up a bit because it still doesn't feel too nice in, in the hand. So I just go over every piece like this and it leaves a much nicer finish, feels a lot nicer. So when these are finished, they'll have a saw blade on them. So this is just a uh, bow saw blade that comes across here that I fix in with um, a nut and a bolt. And then across the top, there'll be a, a cord across the top connected to this, I think it's called a windlass. And um, then you twist it around to, to tension the string and it tightens the saw blade. And the saw blade will stay in place when you take it apart. So then you, you take the cross piece out. And then the whole thing folds round. And the saw blade sort of lives inside the groove. It's a really good tool to take out when um, you're camping or foraging for wood or something. So anytime I go out collecting wood, I'll take it um, with me. And it's just so quick to take apart and put back together and I can just stick it in my backpack. Because obviously when it's all assembled, it's quite big. So it's not so good for carrying around like a normal bow saw is. So then once they're all burnished, I'll... Um, give them a coat of linseed oil and this, this, for these ones I use boiled linseed oil just because it dries much quicker so I can apply it and it'll be dry in like half an hour and then I'll assemble them, I'll put the, the blade and the, t and the cord across. I ended up leaving these out here over the weekend just because the oil's not that nice smelling and um, I thought I'd leave them for a couple of days just to let the smell go away so they don't stink out inside but they're looking good and um, so now I'm just going to uh, put them together and they'll be ready to for people to buy So I've put all the saws together now I've attached the blades and put on the, the, the cord and um, a couple of them have already sold, so I've sent them out this morning. Um, so I just thought I'd show you how how it kind of works. So you can see I've attached this string. This is my one that I've been using now for uh, about a year and a half. Um, and then I've attached the blade as well. So to put it together, it folds out like this. Put the cross piece into these holes in either upright. And then the blade is tensioned by twisting this. You want to get it quite tight. So there it is. And the blades nice and tight. I, I've carved the handle here so it's quite comfortable to hold. And then and then you take it down again, just release the tension in the cord and then hook that. 
and you can pull the cross piece out. So it goes teeth first into these grooves on either handle. That way now you're not going to hurt yourself on the blade. Put those together and then just hold it together like that. So you can keep it as just basically two strip, two sticks and a, and a bit of string. Stick it in your backpack or put it somewhere out of the way so it's not taking up loads of space. There you go. So there's a link below uh, if you want a bit more information just about how I came up with the design and my inspiration and um, uh, there's a link to my shop as well if you want to if you want to buy one and if if they're out of stock in the shop just give me an email or message me and um, I'm usually working on the next batch so um, you'll be able to get your hands on one